About to get started on our first controlled burn of the year. I'm hiking back now. I got the backpack leaf blower back there. I already got some good fire line blown in. There's gonna be a few of us. We're burning off a good sized meadow, an area we call Pine Meadow. There's some neat old Virginia pines throughout this area. Some nice openings, have some native grasses seeded in there. Really, really good wildflower diversity that pops up in there. So we got a lot of build up material on the ground. We're gonna be burning that off. That's gonna be recycled back into the ground. It's gonna kind of fertilize the site. So some of the established perennials they're gonna be able to utilize all that recycled nutrients and hopefully grow to their fullest potential. Heading up there now, I'm gonna show you how we get these fire lines blown in. It's a really easy process. All right, I'm getting up here on the high side of the burn unit. We're always gonna start mostly on the high side of the hill. So you're gonna start your fire at the top and use backing fire at the initial part to get your fire lines extended out. Then you can start dropping down the hill and lighting out strips or smaller head fires. This is what the upper fire break looks like. You can see it over my shoulder. That's zero prep minus that's a four wheeler trail and just blowing out the leaves and all the dead debris. There's a tiny little bit of green clover in there. That's not gonna be a problem as we're lighting this strip on this side over here. We'll have somebody stand there with a leaf blower and we'll have a backpack sprayer with a little of water so if anything were to want to try to creep across this trail it's going to be under control so right back here you can see behind me where we opened up the canopy just a little bit more in here get a little more grass a little more wildflowers growing up here right here decent sized walnut huge canopy not much on the stem that thing's coming out there's another one up there we're going to take out both those walnuts a lot of times walnuts are great timber trees but in the middle of a meadow or a burn unit that thing's going to reseed and repopulate you can barely keep up with all the saplings that re-sprout up so we're trying to grow wildlife habitat right here in this specific spot so those walnuts are going to be coming out so you can see what the fire line looks like the only prep that's been done here i brought a brush hog through here just my atv pull behind it's been probably two years at least since i actually mowed through here just came through here one time this fire line today all i did was two passes with the backpack leaf blower so you can see we got bare soil okay all the material that could burn out of here is gone this is one here i don't love that this is right here this is japanese stilt grass right here it's pretty built up especially underneath this walnut tree where not a whole lot else will grow but because the japanese stilt grass is an annual it just dies and leaves its skeleton every year it blows away you're left with this bare soil so if this was an open prairie we were trying to establish a fire break we would mow that down as short as possible use a leaf blower to blow the vegetation all out all the dead material that could burn get that as clean as possible sometimes people will use a disc down here where i'm at in southern ohio you go take a tiller to a spot like this you're liable to get more invasive stuff popping up than you are beneficial plants after you're done using that as a fire break so there's a lot of different options on how to make breaks but make sure you know for every burn unit the appropriate appropriate way to do it. This is my neighbors back here. The way that those oak leaves are, that thing is flammable as heck. So we want to make sure all our fire is staying over here on this side of the line. All right, test fire time. It's about 4.30. We got three and a half hours of daylight, probably two hours of good humidity. Give it a shot. So we got about 30% humidity right now. Pretty much little to no wind, which is nice. The smoke's really lifting good. So it'll be fun to actually stand downwind of it. <laughs> I think Keith can kind of stand here and watch both ends and have the water right by him. Okay. And then just really try to black this top in 15 feet. Shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, you can throw some dots in past it too if you want. Well, let's see what this does right here while you're right there. Kind of see how this wants to behave. Because that screen's no joke. Yeah. I'm swinging back down here. This is a line I lit about 20 minutes ago and it's still creeping in. It's backing pretty slow, but it is backing. It's continuing to burn, so that's perfect. Yeah, I mean, it's just creeping around there. You might as well just wait till later to put fire in there. I'm like halfway to the poplar edge down here. Let's at least let me get to that.
Looks like we now have close to 50 feet of black. The spots that are still putzing around, they're like two, three inch flames on average. Looks like close to 60 feet of black. I just ran another strip up and checked in the Pine Meadow main area, dropping back down to the spring now. I'm gonna start trying to bring a little heat interior to get like pretty good and black on this side. So if you could maybe start your line down from like the cattle tank area and start that down just because we're gonna lose sunlight over there first. All right, working our way down here. Ben's on the opposite corner. Wind's coming up here. This is perfect. Gonna start working down this edge. All right, this is the furthest downhill point over here. But we got the whole top all blackened out and plenty of black space. So we're gonna try to start getting lower down this hill and lighten a little bit more intense fire to carry uphill through some of these areas where we got a lot of woody plants we wanna set back. here on the bottom of the lower west flank and I'm almost tied into the bottom which is right down there it's back in about six inches to a foot in here I'm trying to add a little heat to the middle it's going on six o'clock so we're trying to get this pretty hot before it gets too late in the day Larry's got the other side well in black and probably 30 yards in up there okay Keith we're getting somewhere in this bottom meadow now it's getting pretty hot real good so I'm gonna let this get burned down a second it won't take long at all I'm going to start on the bottom side here, lighting a fire. We're going to hopefully get that to carry uphill. Keith and I are working our way north. Got a nice strip here, real steep bank. Got a lot of woody encroachment on that thing. We're gonna try to get the top side all backed in a couple feet. Then we're gonna get to the bottom side and just try to light a head fire up this bank. Get some of these woody plants set back. So the fire on the uphill side, it's coming down, working against the slope. That's called a backing fire. Right here, this flared up spot, working up the bank, that's called a head fire. Fire's always gonna run uphill faster than it goes downhill. We're sort of getting to the end here. Larry has lit this whole end, and I've lit this whole end from the flank. This is basically the center where I'm standing now, the bottom center. Burned really good on the south slope, burning so-so on the east slope, but at least it's moving uphill and consuming what we're trying to burn. And it's cool to have like burn off of over. So it's about one year after the burn. We're out here today just hiking around. We're getting ready to do some prescribed fire on some other locations, but we're just checking out the response from the last burn we did here last spring. And we're just kind of looking to see if did the burn accomplish our goals. And I would say definitely. We got a huge jump in flush and vegetation in this meadow. After the fire, all kinds of different native grasses jumped up. Just a big jump in cover. And that's kind of the thing we were going for up here. It's good cover with forage mixed into it. Yeah, so we marked out trees with yellow paint that we're gonna leave and every other tree's getting cut. It's gonna be roughly 4,000 board feet and uh, we're gonna try to make some two by fours out of it. It's gonna look a little sunnier here in the next couple years, but that's the goal. Get early successional plants back in the understory and open her up. I mean, I think from a hunting standpoint, this is really cool. A variety of species can utilize an area like this, but you know, for a lot of us hunting deer and turkey, they're definitely gonna use something like this. And it's just not present on a lot of landscapes. So if you have the ability to kind of manipulate it in your favor, you're gonna have better hunting and just wildlife viewing experiences in general. These guys have told me about this. It's actually my first time here. Pretty much everything I expected. Prime time spot that I'd be looking for on a public land situation, so. Well, let's go get the drip torches out. We got conditions, we got people. So stay tuned for more projects out here in Pine Meadow. It's gonna look a little different in the next couple of years.